104.1 KRBE. Did you know the three-digit extension of the... All right, let's hit it. Now time for Rule and Ryan's prank call. Now I understand this is another telemarketer turnaround. (laughs) Oh, fun. Yay. The goal here is to repeat a phrase provided by the listeners of KRBE (laughs) and the Rule and Ryan show that we will repeat over and over and over again until they figure out that we're screwing with them. Sometimes. So we we like to take bets, though, Kevin, here in the room. We like to know how long is the prank call? How long did the call last? And then we'll guess how many times you said it. Four and a half minutes. Oh, so you kept doing it. Four and a half minutes. Yes. And what is the phrase that you keep repeating till you drive them nuts? Sounds like a scammy scam. Sounds like a scammy scam. Ooh. Hmm. Four and a half minutes is a long time. I'll say 14. Uh, I was going to go 11. Uh, you writing these down? Yep. All right, cool. Mm, I don't have any scratch paper. I really don't know. Maybe 12. All right. Well, you better not know if you knew. <laughs> Cheater! No, I'm just, I'm just trying to like <laughs> trying to guess how many times That's you can 13. Get that 13. I heard it earlier and I counted it. All right, so okay, today... 14, 11, or 12. How many times is he going to say, is this a scam? Sounds like a scammy scam. Because he adds other things to the conversation to, to drive him nuts. So. Here we go. Exactly. And this is what happened when I hit record when they are trying to buy my rental house. All right, ma'am. What's your name now? Uh, yeah, uh, my name is... And I'm working uh, for... Home buyers, and we just wanted to know, ma'am, whether you're interested in um, selling this property located at in Houston, Texas. Oh, absolutely! I can't believe it. Uh, yeah, uh, do you happen to be interested in selling this property, ma'am? Uh, hold on, just a, just a second. Yeah, I just wanted to verify the uh, number of bed and baths this property have. Uh, what we have here is three bedrooms and three bathrooms. Is this correct? That's correct. This sounds like kind of scammy scam. <laughs> no? Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. All right. And uh, do you happen to know the uh, total lot area of this property also? Oh, ye- yes. Uh, sounds scammy scam. Um, I beg your pardon. What do you mean by scammy scam? Are you for real about this? Is it a scammy scam? You no, know, ma'am. We do buy properties here in Texas. And if also, if you wanted to um, see us, or you can actually visit our official page, www.com, for more information, if you wanted to fill up the uh, forms there. Oh, that sounds like a load of work. <laughs> it's a scammy scam, though. So do you happen to be interested or not? <laughs> yes. Because if you're not interested, we are not going to force you. Oh, that's okay. It sounds like a scammy scam. Yeah, I... <laughs> Yeah, I know that you're interested what? to sell the property, but it's just that you're not um, sound interested. Oh, I yeah, am. I Please talk to me. Mm-hmm. All right, <laughs> that's good. Then. Okay, so let's proceed. Oh, so does this property have also a mortgage? Um, I could check. Mm-hmm. Okay, mortgage. You know, I got that mortgage in 2010. I look a whole lot better then. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what a cousin like Ryan will do to you and wears you down. <laughs> so I kicked him out. <laughs> now he's paying for me to live here. <laughs> oh, I see. So, um, I know what is your relationship with this Kevin? Because what we have here is the name Kevin. Oh, that's my Sancho. Like I'm beg your pardon? <laughs> yes, ma'am. That's okay. Don't tell anyone. He's my Sancho. <laughs> oh, okay. He's my sweet baby bunny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he is the owner on the deed of this property, or is it uh, under your name? Oh, no. He runs this. <laughs> I just live here. You know, he pays for my potatoes and my Mountain Dew and lady products. But is this a scammy scam? I'm telling you, now, uh, we, are, we are for real. We buy properties here in Texas. Oh, that's fantastic. You must be rich. I know. I'm not the rich one. Oh, uh, you must be married to uh, Eric. He's the rich person I know. <laughs> yep. If you see that uh, our price is agreeable, then we can uh, fix a date where we can visit the property. I like visitors. All right. Yeah, but if you happen, I mean, if you're going to rate the current condition of the house now, ma'am, uh, what rate would you give if you're going to rate it from 1 to 10? Oh, I'd rate it fancy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, you've made some renovations also? 
Yes, I dug a tunnel to Mexico. And I beg your pardon? And what I'm asking is about the renovations. Oh, you know what I, thought you, I thought you said the vacations. I you were oh, in the I, Where am I saying? <laughs> oh, he loved that place. There's so many young Latin fellers running around there. You know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me. You're so <laughs> milk. <laughs> I love you. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> are you messing with me? Is this just a scammy scam? Are you a... I know, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're the sweetest thing I've seen since, honey, do melon. I do love you. Okay. You got to call me tomorrow. The wheel is on. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, my God. 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 Oh, oh, my God, we totally failed on that guy. We weren't even close. <laughs> only like seven. 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 I know, I got carried away. But all the other stuff was so good. I know. Wow. I got my carried own, away. My Sancho. <laughs> <laughs> you had your own storyline going. Was, <laughs> your Cheetos and your Mountain Dew <laughs> and your great. lady products. He was cheating on you and, uh, with Latin boys. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea what my actual story was, but she was on the, on the ride. Uh, uh, you know, she was along oh, for the that ride. Was, that, was that was a great. dude. He would wow. Uh, he would have. He would have fighting back with well, it. Well, oh, I, so nice. I might have some recordings and some fellas, too, that we'll hear this semester that stuck around to hang out with me. Now, I don't know if they're getting paid to have fun with me, but it's been it's been a good ride. Are they paid hourly or do they get bonuses if you get if they buy that? You know, oh, I bet you especially collections. You know, they get mm-hmm. bonuses on oh, yeah. getting me. So that is called a telemarketer turnaround, but you can also <laughs> set up a friend or family member on a prank call. We do those two. That's um, krbe.com forward slash prank call requests with an S. You talk yes. about requests. And we do robo calls and we do regular calls, and you can maybe people can pick the variety of personality they'd like for you to be on the call, Kevin. Yes. Has anybody ever told you that? They I, could you please be Leviticus Swaggerton? We haven't heard from him in a while. Anybody ever well, ask you that on email? Televangelist. Hey, man. <laughs> I'm just saying. Bryce is the assistant, um, you know, phone operator for. Well, let me tell you about Swaggerton. Bryce. Uh, Bryce is ha- is having a real hard time with the telemarketers. They do not, they do not want to deal with him. Mm. He's just a he little bit like he's too, too spacey. Yeah, too they want yeah. the old people because yeah. they feel like they can take advantage of they older people. They feel like a stoned young guy is probably not going to be a good sale. No. But when they hear me coming on, they're like, oh, yeah. Oh, they start yeah. licking their chops. Can I have that laugh again, please, that you gave her? <laughs> <laughs> you just keep it going like a little bit awkwardly long. <laughs> oh, God, that's so good. Okay, krv.com slash prank call request. Coming up next, uh, you also go to our website to get connected with us if you have gotten disconnected from someone else. It's called Closure. Uh, this person ghosted you for whatever reason. We find them and we connect you back and you get your answers next on the Rule and Ryan Show. Yes, it's all about, you know, finding out what happened to somebody. It's not always about ghosting in a relationship. I mean, yes, we get a lot of those calls where it's like, hey, I went out with three dates, and then he just fell off the face of the planet. I want to know what happened to him. Closure all kinds helps of closures. you find, yes, the people that you can't find on your own for whatever reason. Go to krbe.com, and Eric's going to help it you out. It takes time, and Rula, so if It does. If you're looking... At- like I said, we have a lot of relationship ones, like Ryan said, mm-hmm. but I've loved the ones where you're just trying to track someone down for some Yeah, Maybe it was important to you at one point. Yeah, and you're trying and look, to find we, them. I was, those are, those I'm are really harder, happy but... that we get to um, re put this one back in the spotlight because this one really touched my heart the first time we heard how this was going to play out because a girl named Lynn contacted Eric, our producer Eric, via krbe.com. It was not a relationship ghosting. She was looking for somebody from her past, and why don't we? Why don't we I think it ties in great, it? you know, because all the teachers are back. A lot of teachers are back now, and some schools started this week. And you need to yeah. know. I mean, if you're ever feeling down, you know, maybe you're a veteran teacher, maybe you're a new teacher. Am I making a difference? Oh yeah, you're making a difference. In yeah, Lynn's we have case, proof right now. In Lynn's yep. case, I mean, a- it, she carried it with her her whole life. Here's how this played out when we welcomed Lynn to the show. Good morning. How are you guys? Hey, Great. Lynn. We're fantastic. So who is it you need closure with? Oh, my goodness. She was the best teacher in the whole wide world, Miss Natalie. Um, it's just something I hope you can make happen. Um, I had this teacher 
I lived back in Louisiana, and so she was my high school English teacher. And, you know, I've moved to Houston after graduating from college, and I'm just hoping to find her. I mean, she just was one of those teachers that everyone loved. What subject did she teach? English. Can I ask you, uh, how long has it been since you've been in high school? I just graduated college last year, so it's like five years. Okay. Five years, okay. Is it because you graduated and you left, or tell us more of the story, how you lost track? I graduated and left. I went to college. Um, actually, Miss Natalie helped me get into college. Like, she's the reason I even went and encouraged me and helped me get through all the paperwork and process. So, wait, tell us the full story, though, because I, I mean, had, okay, so I get it. You graduated high school, but you couldn't go back, like, your first year back for Christmas break. You didn't want to go visit Miss Natalie. Like, what happened there? I I would love to have gone back, but I ended up going to Alabama, Roll Tide. (laughs) She helped me get into school, and I also stayed there. Like, it was hard to come back. It was financially difficult. So, you know, even if I'd wanted to, it wasn't really an option. How old is Miss Natalie, guys? She was older, I would say, when I graduated, maybe like her lower 60s. Lower 60s. Okay, so she clearly had a special place in your heart. Uh, Tell us why she was so special. Oh, my gosh. She was like a saint. She literally was one of those people who would show up early if you needed help, stay late. I also loved to sing and do musicals and stuff. She would come to all the shows. You know, she was just one of those people who was always hugely supportive for me. I mean, she was even there for me. I had this really bad car accident my senior year, and she was there for me. She was like a second mom. I don't know. I just feel awful that, like, I don't know what happened to her. And when we graduated, like, not having her there, it was like having a family member. She was really important to you then. I've been feeling this a long time. What did the school say about Miss Natalie? Like, why? What was the statement they made on her disappearance? So they made it sound like it was a medical issue, but because of that, it was like, we can't say anything else. Right. Yeah, they're not going to divulge anything. But, Eric, we have yep. tracked down Miss Natalie. Through talking to your school, telling them what we're doing, um, and then no I way. found out through a cousin. It wasn't too hard to find her, but she's not <laughs> wow. on social media, so we have her. She's listening in. Oh, she, my God. Let's everything. welcome her no now. Way. Hold on, yep. Lynn. Let's welcome her to the conversation. Please stand by. Miss Natalie, welcome to the Rula and Ryan show in oh. 104.1 KRV. Hello. Oh, hello. That is such a wonderful thing to hear. I'm, I'm so happy that she's, she's doing well. Does that make you feel good knowing that you made such an impact in people's lives? Oh, I'm going to cry. Why don't you guys say hi to each other? You haven't talked to each other in five years. <laughs> hi. I know. Well, <laughs> what happened, uh, Lynn, I, I got Lyme disease and I got it really bad. I got it where oh. you, you got foggy head, fog, everything. And I, I, could, I wasn't even thinking straight. And I, of course, I, I always remember her. She worked so oh. hard. She's so special. Um, this this kid just put herself out there. Anything extra she could do, she did. It was just amazing. And, uh, Lynn, I was so ill, I just decided to take an early retirement. I'm sorry if I, uh, oh, you know, wasn't no. there for your graduation. I'm just glad to know that in the grand scheme of things, you're okay. Like, I thought the worst, to be honest. And so it's just uh, amazing yeah. to hear your voice. I'm so happy to well, hear that yeah. she talked to you. I, Thank you. Yeah, I know. I, I guess I, I should have told it that it was Lyme disease or something. I just didn't want anybody to know my business. I, did, I was taking care yeah. of it. That's understandable. Miss Natalie, do you have a way where she could uh, have your contact info and you guys could catch up? Sure. Please. Sure, I oh love gosh. that. Sure. <laughs> what would you like to say to her? I just want to say thank you. I mean, you have no idea how much you changed my life. Like, I mean, helping me get into college and now I've graduated. Like, you literally set me on a path to where I am today. And I seriously, I don't think I could have ever done it without you. Like, I know I couldn't. Oh, just I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I'm. Ha- it's why I became a teacher. To, yeah. to have an effect on the world. And well, you I'm did. Pr- I'm proud of you, girl. I'm proud yeah. of you. And it wasn't just me. I mean, I want you to know that. Like, there are so many people who have the same feeling as I do. And we all just wondered. And I would love to catch up more and just. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Okay. Great. That's oh, great. Miss Natalie. Oh, that's awesome. This is heartwarming. Love teachers. We don't even know you, but we've seen these relationships. We know exactly You're all good what now? this is. You okay? Yeah, is everything good with your health? Oh, yes, yes. I'm I'm fine. It was the wisest choice I, I did. Uh, early retirement. I'm just taking it easy now. Of course, I miss teaching and I miss my students. They were all special. But you have to take care of yourself. Yes, you do. But look at the lives that you changed. Oh, thank you. That's so nice to hear. I don't think teachers hear that enough. Oh, gosh, Miss Natalie, we're so happy. Eric, good job on finding her. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> Lynn, I'm <laughs> Thank so you glad too. you came to us so you could find Miss Natalie. And I can't wait to hear more about your reunion. That's so great. Congratulations on finding oh each my other. Gosh. 
Thank, Thank you. you. Love you. Love you, Lynn. Love you. Oh, my gosh. Love you, too. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so sweet. Okay, so sweet. hang on the line. Don't hang up. We'll get, we'll get y'all off the air so y'all can exchange information. And thank you so much, Lynn, uh, for coming to the show to help you with this. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. <laughs> like, why? Don't thank me. <laughs> okay. There you go. That's closure. That's what I love about being on this show. When you get to see people's lives and yeah, we have fun, reconnect. We, yeah. and I mean, yeah, we have a lot of laughs, but it's kind of fun when you get to do something like that. That's why I wanted to play that one for today, because hopefully if you're listening to yeah. this for the first time. And you're uh, ha- you have to go back to school yeah. to get your classrooms mm-hmm. ready, or maybe you're already in school. I mean, I know that in the last three years it's been hell oh, yeah. for some teachers. It's been really rough, and so a lot of people have self-reflected, like, is this right for me still? Should I still be doing this? Yeah, you don't know who you're affecting and the way you're affecting them and they come back to you five years down the road i mean i think that's the great teachers that's the great thing about being a teacher you know in this life we're lucky if we can make somebody's like maybe a handful of people in our lives that we can really make an impact in their life but when you're a teacher and you say somebody like miss natalie who's taught for like 20 plus years you could impact a thousand lives and i think this is where we as and i say we i mean everyone here listening and us need to think about those teachers and reach out to them. Oh, yeah. Let them know. Even if you graduated last year, if you graduated 50 years ago, if they're still around. You know what I mean? The Find them. Nowadays, you can find them pretty easy through Facebook. Oh, or, I have. I was just saying that. I've, got, I've got a few of my old teachers as Facebook friends. Yeah. Well, if That's they meant something to you, tell cute. them. Anybody. Yeah. You should tell anyone that meant something to you. It doesn't even have to be a teacher. Yeah, there's one I'm still trying to find. Well, I mean, you you're, mean something I'll to do it. me, give, Eric. Give me that Eric, when you, yeah. um, when you lost your mom in high school, is there a teacher that kind of like stuck with you or maybe sticks out oh, like, yeah. who's like Mrs. a special Williamson. teacher you had this is Williamson because I had a lot of things happen that senior year I, I've never talked about on the radio someday I will but now's not the time uh, but when she died I was lost like I was because my dad was he drank a lot and he's so grieving he, himself he was grieving lost his love of his life they were married 25 years so mm-hmm. I was on my own and it was not a good time I, she died and then school started like five days later. Oh, my God. Ugh. So imagine trying to go to school, sitting there, and I've never cared about was she, school. What so subject she was a was theater. She? Theater? Uh, she did. She's my uh, theater teacher. I never mm-hmm. had her. It's funny. I never had her as a teacher teacher, mm-hmm. uh, but I had her as my, because uh, I was in theater from freshman to senior year. Okay. Well, you mean traditional classroom yeah, teacher. You she were took, always like, in the she, theater with just, her. I'd just go in there. like I had like, a bunch of study halls. I'd just go in her room. I'd go back to the theater and, and do stuff or she just kept me on the straight and narrow because I was leaving school early to go smoke weed and just hang out with a bad crowd. Oh, man. I was just doing stupid stuff. And then I got back. She's like, Eric, you got to, you know, your mom would not want this. Mm-hmm. You can't destroy yourself. That's the worst thing you could do for her, uh, to, for her, uh, you know, to do that. So I don't want to think about it too much. So I, because of her, I stayed in school. I s- stayed positive and I thought about my future. That's how I got into radio because... I wanted to do radio. I found a local radio station in town, and it gave me something to, to think, uh, make my mom proud. That's so sweet. That's I did the opposite. Instead of trying to do negative stuff, I did it for a little bit, but thank God I had someone there that actually yeah. gave a crap, because at that time, my sisters were in Chicago. I was alone on a farm. Oh, God. My dad didn't give a crap about me. He did. Like I said, I mean. Well, I mean he, he, could, he didn't have the capacity to care about you, because yes. he was too he deep in his, his own grief. Budweiser. Wow, that's really great that she shook you straight. She saw that you were going down the wrong road. Miss Williamson, you said her name was? Yeah, but last year was her final, like she had a, she wrote her own play. It's kind of like Mr. Holland's Opus. Oh, really? And and they performed it and they invited all the kids back, but I couldn't get away. It was So uh, she just anyway. retired? Yeah, well, she did kind of retire, but then she just kept with the theater okay. to do the plays, but then she wrote her own play and then she had students come back, like my cousins were there, but I couldn't, I felt bad. I wanted to be part Does of it. Does she know what she meant to you? Oh, yeah. I told or her. what she did for you? You talked to her. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think she knows as like this much, but you should actually send her a link to this podcast. I mean, I'm gonna call. I mean, we talk <clears throat> on Facebook and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. and for those that are newer to the show, or maybe you've missed this part, a um, little tidbit comes around every now and again. Eric's uh, family has a scholarship in what your mom's name, right? At the both school, now, or both your parents. Because my dad died a few years names. later, it's like seven years later. So yeah, now it's both my parents, and it's so, for anybody you know, that. Uh, but you have to have a job, mm-hmm. have a certain GPA. It's not like you have to have all A's, right? Mm-hmm. Just be a good good kid. You have to be an extra uh, like. You can be one sport or a theater. Or, you have to be in something. Okay. And work. Because my parents believed in working. Because my whole life I've been working. That's a fantastic thing. That's so why I'm like, I would love to sleep. Everyone's like, oh, you'll be bored if you ever retire, Eric. I'm like, you know what? My whole life I've been up early. Early. On a farm. Yeah. Yeah. Your job dad I'm... used to wake up at what, 5 a.m.? Oh, yeah. Especially if I go out and party. 
<laughs> Are you so able I didn't have to? A cur- he's like, son, oh, you don't have a curfew, boy. but you have to be up at five a.m. You got to get up and do the job. You stay up till three. You stay out till two thirty-three in the morning. You'd be thrown up on the tractor. Yep. You only do that twice. Now, have you uh, oh, have sorry. you been able to uh, sleep in on the weekends? Oh, that, or do you now, naturally just like wake up early? Now I will. I could go to, down to Galveston. Uh-huh. <laughs> My wife's done like twenty things. They went at the beach. I don't wake up till like ten fifteen. Oh, I can't do that. I can probably sleep till awesome. eleven. Really? I'm like Same. Rula. I'm like a camel oh. when it comes to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> store it. You know, the really doctors will tell you you cannot it. store sleep like it doesn't. It doesn't work that well, way. Well, doctors probably say yeah, we shouldn't be doing our. Sure does feel darn good. We shouldn't be doing our shift either. No, you're supposed right. to have seven hours of sleep a night. Yeah, really good luck yeah. with that. Yeah, I think yeah, I good luck with that. Average about four. four Lewis and has half. to sleep on her back for the next three months. Yeah, for those that don't know, last night was rough, y'all. I think I got a total of two hours and forty five minutes. It was so bad. I kept waking up and I kept thinking to myself, "How am I gonna? How am I gonna wake up and actually be cognizant tomorrow? Like in a couple of hours? Because every time I woke up, I'd look at the clock, and that's the worst thing you can do. Because yeah, it never just, look it feeds at your the phone. beast of like I'm never gonna get some sleep, and then you try and sleep a little bit, and then just when I got my deep sleep, what happens? Alarm. Alarm. Uh, Alarm. So I'm just like. That's why you don't uh, look at it. And then you turn it into a game. It's like, oh, I wonder how many. Do I have like three hours to sleep or, or 10 minutes? That's the worst game show ever. Yeah. I did <laughs> this morning, when you, too. When you look at the phone fun. and you see the time, yeah. then it removes all doubt. You and you're like, oh, that, crap. I've got to get up. It's a game show network. It's a new game. No, I'm just saying I do that personally. Yeah. I will not do look. a show of. I think we got punked on this pitch. This is a dumb idea. Maybe Billy Bible Bunkers. If you watch uh, Righteous Gemstones, you'd know what that is. <laughs> Which I've not finished watching that season yet. Yeah, but i got to get caught I'm, up on that. God yeah. bless your parents' memory, Eric and Miss Williamson, for helping to and pull they, you out of that dark hole. Speaking of that, real quick, i got to, uh, let me find this message from Joe, uh, where's his name at? Okay. Uh, Henry. This is Henry. He te- uh, reached out on Instagram yesterday. He goes, hey, hey, Eric, I finally did it. Colonoscopy. I built up the courage and went through with it. Everything went well, and I'm good, cancer-free. Well, I know it's been a while since you've talked about the issue, but I'm one person who listened to your words, buddy. So uh, stay humble, bud. Keep up the good work. People are listening. P.S. Go Dodgers. Uh, <laughs> I'm just glad you got a uh, checkup. So <laughs> go yeah. get yourself checked out. In a few weeks, I'll do that bit my message. You know, with all this talk Aww. about back to school, we've got somebody coming in who's doing something that's really awesome for back to school. A good friend of the show. Yep. Mo Ammer, it's baby. Mo Ammer. Oh. Of course, his show on Netflix, we were all obsessed with it. We're waiting patiently for season two of Mo on Netflix. It's all Houston all the time, and he's doing something for back to school for the community. We'll talk to him next on the Rule and Ryan Show. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Wake up. It's KRBE and more of the Rule and Ryan Show. All right. We are about ready to have something really cool go down here. Uh, normally, Scoop is brought to you by Innovative, Innovative Lasers, Lasers of Houston. Of Houston. But today we have a special guest joining us. Uh, he's been on the show before. We loved his Netflix series because oh, yeah. it's put the spotlight right on Houston. We're talking about Mo Ammer. He is a stand-up comic. He is an actor. He's been in blockbuster movies with uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, like Black Adam. Uh, he's working on season two of Mo on Netflix. And we want to put a spotlight on him because he's doing something really great for the community as school's getting back to it. Please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Rule and Ryan Show. Mo! Good morning, Mo. Hi. Hey, <laughs> Mo. So uh, tell us a little bit about what's going down this weekend. Uh, this weekend is a big drive to help kids who are, you know, it's a tough time out there. You know, like everybody's trying to get their school supplies together. So we're trying to help them out and make sure that everybody gets what they need for this coming year. It's a Saturday, right? Yeah, this Saturday. Uh, predominantly for A-League School District. Um, you know, where I went to school, went to Hastings, went up Hastings and A-League Middle School. So I just want to make sure all the kids have all the tools that they need to have a successful school year. So it's at the A-Leaf Neighborhood Center. For those listening, it's at 11903 Bel Air Avenue. It's school supplies and backpacks. This Saturday, August 12th, what are the times, Mo? Is there a specific time window only? 2.30 to 4.30, that's it. So, Mo, you're going to be there from 2.30 to 3.30. The event's going actually another hour after that. Correct. So, uh, Mo, there's also an alumni basketball game. Are you playing in that? <laughs> I am not playing an alumni basketball game. This is uh, I'm going to save these knees, you know, for as long as I can. I will, uh, 
If they want a permanent three-point shooter that doesn't move anywhere <laughs> on the court, I am nice. more than willing to contribute. If they want, like, a basketball player that just shoots from half court and doesn't play defense, I am good to go. you got to protect those knees. You're going to be on stage oh, here so in funny. September as well. I'm going to be on stage September 16th at Bayou Music Center. Very few tickets left, limited seats. So um, if you guys want to get on that, that's great. But the main reason for this call is definitely for to get the kids the school supplies that they need. I believe from 2.30 to 4.30 this Saturday. I'll be popping in from 2.30 to 3.30, hanging out. And maybe, who knows? You know, maybe I will make an appearance on the basketball court. Who knows? KRB's going to be out there as well. We're going to be out there. Go follow KRB socials. We have a link there. If, if you can't make it out there, we'd love you just to give a donation. And for those just tuning in, um, we're talking to Mo on the Rule and Ryan show, and there's a big event happening this weekend to get yourself ready for back to school. Backpacks and school supplies from 2.30 to 4.30 at the A-Leaf Neighborhood Center. It's 11903 Bel Air Avenue. The Joey P. and Scotty D. Foundation partnered with the city Donate Backpack Supplies and all the things that you need. And there's going to be a, an alumni basketball game that Mo may or may not be watching. And Mo, these, these kids <laughs> need backpacks because, like, my kid's backpack, I can't even carry these things nowadays. It's like you feel like they're in the army or something. There's so many books in their laptops. It's crazy what these kids have to carry nowadays. It's actually wild that still we have backpacks. I thought that at this point, we just everything's on an iPad, all the books on our iPad, but I guess we're not there yet. But until we get there, backpacks for all, I say. And backpacks you're doing a great thing, all. Mo. Appreciate you doing this. Of course, of course. No, it's very important to give back to the community that raised me, where I come from, and a big part of my success today is due to the neighborhood that I grew up in, in A-Leaf. So I'm just happy to be able to do anything. So I'm just very blessed. Mo, do you still have teachers that teach there at Hastings when you were there? Or are they they're all retired? retired they're, or? They've retired. They mostly have retired. Yeah, they mostly have retired. That or makes them feel like crap. That makes them <laughs> Oh, you're so old that all your teachers are dead or retired. <laughs> Nobody no, said they're no, dead, no. right? Jeez. I didn't go there Lord. with that. Wow. Wow. No reason to go there. This is a, this is a, that is a wild turn, okay? <laughs> No reason for this. They're all doing well and healthy, as far as I know. Yeah, for God's my sake. goodness. Man, I put them Maybe they've moved on, gone on, they've to enjoyed heaven? their ten years, and they're oh retired now. What is wrong with you? You're a monster. Oh my God! Oh now you gosh. have to donate fifty backpacks. All right, I will. That. That's right. <laughs> Five zero. You said it. Yep, I heard oh him say God. yes. He said yes. How much he money is yes. that? He said yes. <laughs> so that's how much you make for the whole year, unfortunately. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, one bad joke. 2.30 to 4.30, guys. You're going to see Mo, and you're going to do a great thing for kids that need it at, at the A-Leaf Neighborhood Center this Saturday, August the 12th, 11903 Bel Air Avenue. Man, that would be so awesome. Have Ryan there oh, hand out the backpacks oh, yeah. in the heat with you. Oh, the- all those backpacks he bought. <laughs> I'm afraid he's oh, going to hit gonna me. be happy and crying at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to drive. We're going to have to do an independent drive together. After he donates 50 backpacks. I, I knew we'd always have a laugh when we have you on the Rule and Ryan show. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for what you're doing for you, the school you went to. I love and that. Maybe it, we'll see. He Can made it, Rula. He made what? it, and he doesn't forget about our community. That's what's awesome. A lot of people. That's true. They make it, and they just forget about Houston. Nope, not Mo. No, nowhere. And Mo, I'm curious to know for for Mo season two on Netflix, will you use a, and any of your old schools as maybe some setup areas for some scenes? I don't know what's going on there, but I know you love a leaf. Yeah, no, we did it in first season we did it in the first season we'll see how it all shakes up but definitely we'll be filming at some point after the strike is over uh we'll be filming somewhere in the neighborhood for sure mo thanks for checking in again and uh big uh wishes of success for you guys getting all those kids all the supplies they need thanks for what you're doing thank you thank you so much 50 backpacks ryan all right all right (laughs) and we went see that receipt too ryan it's oh open one of those guys. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And then nef- nothing happens. I'll post that on it. KRB's Insta. Yep. Shame him <laughs> on Saturday. Thank you, guys. <laughs> okay, Mo. Bye, Mo. I'm, I'm Bye, good Mo. for it. I'm good for it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay, do it. I want to give a, speaking of school, and by the way, I did see Mo season one twice, and I don't know which scene it was yeah, at a leave at Hastings. I have to rewatch it now before season two gets Probably when going. he was a little Denarius. kid, when he was a little kid and he was going to school. What's the but he was, but theme is city? That from high school? Is that an a is Fame City over Fame well, City, yeah, that was They called Italy. it Funplex in Mo, but it yeah. was originally Fame City. Yeah, it was called it. Fame City. Maybe because maybe, maybe it wasn't. You were talking about the school. Yeah, but maybe uh, like high school. I don't think he's filmed in the school yet. No, I don't think so. Yeah, okay. It's interesting when we interviewed Lizzo. She hung out at the same place. She did it's not true. know that Funplex used to be called Fame City, though. But she didn't go to Hastings, though. Mm-mm. No, she did not. One.
Elsick? I want to, to Elsick, yeah. Yeah, I think I want to so. give a shout out to Renee who called in. She's a super loyal listener and she wants to recognize her son, Devin. It's his first year in high school and Drake going into fifth grade. They're starting school. I know teachers are getting back and then some students are already back. It's the start of the school year. That's why Mo is donating backpacks. Ryan's going to donate 50 backpacks. All right, right. And, yeah, uh, <laughs> and if there's a, um, the and just real face. quick, I want to, I want to mention when it comes to sports in Brooke. school, <laughs> when it comes to sports in school, we'll have to dive Dive deep next hour of Scoop about Johnny Manziel on Netflix with Untold. Oh, yeah. I can't believe I'm one of the first ones to watch them. I mean, the first day it came out, I thought it came out last week. You watched it came out already? yesterday. Oh my God, yes. How is that even possible? I Normally you're to... watching like the history of the sock. It's because she can't go well, anywhere. All I gotta do is lay down and put my leg elevated, and then there's Netflix <laughs> is right in front of me. So I'm just scanning. I don't doubt okay. that. It's probably interesting. I'd like to know how we decide to wear socks. We're gonna dive deep on it next hour, Eric, because it's really <laughs> crazy. Of the sock? I, I'm gonna make a major <laughs> statement. No. I'm going to make a statement right now. Texas A&M University is what it is because of Johnny Manziel. Debate that in an hour from now. Oh. Texas A&M is what it is right now because of Johnny Football. I don't think they want to be. No, I think you just, oh, just it, uh, really pissed you're off gonna a lot of You're going to know why I'm saying that, Eric. <laughs> really, uh, Eric, you're going to know of, why I'm saying that. I don't know. There's a lot of tradition way before yeah. that dumbass. Y'all, <laughs> you're going to know why I'm saying that if you watched Untold. We'll I don't want to know hour. about that dumbass. Untold. <laughs> See? <laughs> you don't know until you know. I'll tell you some things about A&M. All right. This is brought to you by Duncan. Okay. Push that guy. He doesn't have Children. good press for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It is brought to you by Duncan. Uh, one lucky ticket buyer took home the $1.58 billion, and it was not in Texas, Florida. We had one $1 million in Texas. Man, I wanted the billionaire at least, to, at least somebody in Houston would have been fun to see what they do. I know. Texas Monthly has released its long-awaited list of the top barbecue joints, and luckily for us, Houston is home to four of them. Uh, Brisket and Rice in the Heights, J Bar MBQ on Leland Street, Rosemeyer Barbecue in Spring, and Bar A BQ. Uh, that's about a block away from Montgomery City Hall. You said that was really odd. Well, I'm, I don't understand anything. <laughs> this is the yeah, Q. I don't, I'm like, I don't is, understand what you This is said. Robot Ryan. I don't know is Ryan even here, said. Kevin? Is that I, you I doing AI Ryan. <laughs> R-A-B-Q in Montgomery. I've never heard of any of those. <laughs> I know. I, I'm not going to them. look. You can find the whole article on cron.com. They've got the list of the best barbecue joints. And, of course, what we're all talking about, that Grand Slam last night. Woo-hoo, Man. Amazing. Yeah, King Tuck. You going to play the audio? Do we have the audio, Sam? find it. Tucker sends one to there right field. Go. Back goes on top there. All the way back and gone. He did it. He did it. A grand slam of the night. What an event by Kyle Tucker. Kate Tuck is now oh. invading by C. Wow. One of the bats of the year in the major leagues. Claiming his territory in the Northeast. Winter is here. Oh, God. Jeff. <laughs> that anyway, King Jeff Tuck, Lillen, that's uh, all we know. We didn't hear his commentary. That's yeah. right. King Tuck, that was amazing. The Orioles are the number one team in baseball right now. They have 70 wins. We are at 65 now. And that was amazing because we were down 5 nothing at one point in that game. Then it was 5-3. And then, I mean, 5-2. Uh, and then we it doesn't won matter. 7-6. We won 7-6. We won. We won. We won. Did you awesome. like the fact that uh, Singleton was back? Yeah, because he was awesome. He did. A, he got walked. He went up there, yeah, that was which clutch. is tough to do. He didn't strike out or anything, got walked, and that's what got everyone it's going. It's been a long time. He spent two seasons with the Astros, 2014-2015. It's pretty crazy. And uh, he made his first plate appearance last night in Baltimore. Yep. Go Strauss! Go Strauss! All right, coming up next, we have got the Rapid Fire Quiz oh, coming yeah. up for your chance to see some baseball. The Space Cowboys. Four tickets to see the Space Cowboys. If you choose the right person here on the show to win the Rapid Fire Who Quiz won last for you. Week? Sam was the big winner. Sam. Yeah, yeah. remember Sam was the big winner. And the winner I of the win. Rapid Fire I Quiz g- gets their contestant to pick the mystery box person. And they can't um, pick me so- this time. Oh, yeah. I'm free. Seven one three three nine zero K R B E. That's five seven two three. That's our phone number. Four contestants right now for the rapid fire quiz. Next on the Rula and Ryan show.